I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome back, everyone. I am the Dungeon Master, and this is Doomsday Aftermath. Tonight, we are joining a couple members of the party who got left behind when everybody else ran off to go do fun, exciting adventure stuff. And so they've just been kind of sitting around... Uh, doing their best impression of the vultures from the uh jungle book hey what do you want to do i don't know what do you want to do and and so uh viv and deep knight who deep knight's been the one sort of like asking questions most of the time i imagine yes who is also very concerned about the uh, Black Lantern Aquaman, but understands that you guys also have a Black Lantern Azriel and a Black Lantern Superman and a Black Lantern Wait Wonder a minute. Woman. Did you say Black Ad Lantern Azriel? Yeah. Were you not here for the end of the last session? Yeah, you were, weren't you? Yeah, yes, the... but you never said he was a Black Lantern. I thought I did. I'm almost positive I did. If, even if I didn't, he is. So, you know, you guys, you guys have several Black Lanterns to deal with on top of, you know, other issues going on in and about and around Gotham. There is the uh, security breach that occurred with your computer system, a complete download of all of your data. There is the fact that Lex Luthor blew a hole in your ceiling in order to take Tremor away. There is um, still several other more minor issues going on around Gotham that like, you guys are kind of overpowered for combat speaking, but it's still your job. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what your job as the Justice League really is. It, it well, seems to be I half mean, beating people up and sure. half PR and you know, ten ten percent like cyber criminal hacking or something. I don't know. Okay, so like, if there's a number of minor things uh, going on, we have a bunch of minor schlebs. 
let's just have one of those fucking old timey. Actually, they still kind of do that. Uh, you know, things where everybody sits in the room. I'll stand at the end of the room and tell all the schlebs where they're going and what they're going to be fixing. Kite man like, would like to know what he's fixing. Nothing yet. And, oh. like, depending on uh, what exactly goes down, we'll get a better assessment of their schleb asses and know what to do with them in the future. Since apparently we pulled in a fresh batch of recruits. Isn't that thing that just happened? Uh, yes, but, like, a lot of the, the, like, you have to understand that these aren't necessarily, like, superheroes. These are, you know, uh, vigilantes. Yeah, these are Robins and and uh, Nightwings and um, Green oh, Arrows. So, so allow me to apply simple a simple argument here. I am a superhero, or at least in the power bracket of one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and they are expressly not that street level. The things you mentioned were several things, and I quote, that were too overpowered for combat-wise. Yeah, well, no, no, I, I'm bringing up that these new recruits are not along the same power level as even the henchmen, Kite Man, Firefly, King Kraken... You know, you guys, you guys that have was the, that, that was the ultimate point I was getting to was like, you know, we're superheroes and they're supposed to be below us. Are they supposed to be really below us? That's what I'm getting at is that. So, yeah. Okay. So you guys are power level 13. Your yeah. he, your henchmen are like somewhere in the like seven range, you know, so, somewhere around there. Five mm -hmm. to five to seven. And and, yep. and these uh these guys can be as low as one, but average of around three ish, you know, but like that, that's really, <sighs> really like, you know, low power and yes, Robin and Nightwing and all of these guys actually are power level, like eight, nine or whatever, like they can hold their own. Um, but and not to mention the, uh, play back. Okay. But what? when, when I, when I say, um, you know, these guys are Robin and and Green Arrow, what I mean is these guys are regular ass humans that have gotten good at like a certain discipline. So maybe one of them is kind of like an MMA wrestler, right? You know, like he can he can definitely okay. hold his own in a fight. He's still not going to be anywhere near being able to like go up against when I say a lower level threat that you guys should be able to easily overpower. I'm talking about like um there are still Joker clown gang members who who gather around and do stuff, and they okay. can they can go break. Oh, hold on, just one second. They can go break some of that stuff up, but then when they run into like if the Joker is still out there, or even Harley or somebody like that, they're gonna die. Okay, so let's go that we have a number of schlebs who are, let's face it, a little useless. But we have some tasty ones, like you mentioned, you know, Robins, and Nightwings, and shit. So, how many experienced operators are employed here? Well, you've got the the Catwoman, Batman. Uh -huh. That's obviously one of your top tier assets. Although she still operates mostly as the Batman vigilante and not as an official Justice League member. She's like never at the clubhouse. Okay. And then you have... Actually, let me rephrase. Who of them are here? That's like better... now. Yeah, that's a better question. Okay. So the, the Bat family doesn't typically stick around. Okay. But, but when you guys offered... Clayface a chance to be a real hero. Uh, he did. So he sticks around, but turns out Clayface is uh, not really like as violent as what you would think, and he just really prefers to to do Act more his way. Yeah, more infiltration type of stuff. Yeah. And that itself is a useful talent. It it is? Okay. So, amongst those personnel who can be considered experienced, those who are combat-oriented. 
Okay. Uh, so, um, Firefly is your best combatant, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then King Kraken and then Kite Man, because Kite Man is actually pretty weak, but he has flight. So, so... Can King Kraken talk? No. Ugh, this is a nightmare. I might and King Kraken is, is is not there, but he is accessible uh, through Great King Rat. So, like, you, you can get him there in a manner of speaking. But uh, Kite Man and okay, Firefly well. are, are on site staff at all times. And, okay. then, and then you also uh, would, would have... Um, Clayface around, but like I said, he's not as into the combat. Yep. And yeah, yeah, okay. uh, the last, the last one was um... oh yeah, uh, uh, Red Hood is not a official Justice League member, so he's not on site, but. He's also not welcome in the Bat family, where where the Bat family hangs hangs around offsite in one location. So uh, the the Red Batman, um, Red Hood, is kind of like a a wild card that you could call in. Uh, he's not for what I had intended. Okay, I'm gonna grab Firefly and Kite Man, and get them in a room. Okay. I mean, they're, they're your, you know, workers, like you're not necessarily yeah. the one completely in charge, but yeah. Well, I mean, like no one else is senior. No, I assume no one who outranks me is on staff right now. Right. And I need things to happen during a, let's call this a pseudo crisis, a straight up code orange or something. Um, and basically, I'm just going to take these two aside, and I'm basically going to be like, hey, guys, you're like the two most, you know, senior and experienced uh, members we have available right now. There's a lot of rookies here that I'd like to send out, but I don't want them to get killed. So I'd like the two of you to construct a team of, say, three to six each of promising members that you think we have available to us and take them out on patrol to nip a lot of these smaller issues in the bud and try and make better heroes out of them in the process. You think you guys can handle that? I believe they can handle that. Yeah, but they have to agree to it. Well, Kite Man is certainly, you know, into turning over a, a new leaf and you know, helping people, but, uh, you, you do know that, like, we're villains as far as most people, you know, are concerned, so I don't know mm. that our leadership is necessarily going to be welcomed. Okay, how should I say this? Well, first off, if anyone below you has a problem with it, that sucks. It's their job now. <laughs> They get that that's part of joining a large organization is that you take orders from superiors. Mm -hmm. You salute the what's the what's the phrase? You salute the fucking the uniform, not the man. Right. Yeah, things like that. Two, if you think there is some how would I say relation late relation issues in that, just rebrand or something. Get a new uniform. I don't care. Kite man has tried to change his color palette but cannot change the overall design or he will lose flight i hmm. have you tried faking your death or something kite the... man does nothing but fake it till he makes it to be fair i i do appreciate his his determination to keep with the with the with the kite theme. 
I mean, yeah, but like, it is kind of a public relations issue if people really don't like Kite Man, as much as that is a, you know, low hanging fruit. Well, you get him the it, Central Park. He's not. He's not the Joker here, but he's he's bringing up the valid point that um, rookie wannabe heroes probably don't want to take orders from the uh, C-list villain of the of the week, you know, like um, Kite Man is, you know. Well, here's the sabouts. They're supposed to go out on patrol together and remain vaguely cohesive. The idea is that... How should I say this? Kite Man actually fills this role even better. The thing is, I guess you would operate a little differently than Firefly Kite Man in that I just need you to steer them away from something they can't handle. If you feel the situation would escalate in a way that like isn't permissible, just try and get them out of trouble. Oh, absolutely. Kite Man understands where you're coming from 100%. Kite Man is just concerned that these rookies will have a bad taste in their mouth taking orders from a former villain. If that's the case, I can try and smooth things out later. I just have more important business to look into today. Kite Man understands. And I didn't want to leave a bunch of uh, the little guys hanging, because there are genuine issues to be handled, but stuff, to be honest, that's below my pay grade. <sighs> that kind of hurts Kite Man's feelings. <sighs> you know, I get it. But you'll get there eventually. It really ain't that long off. Things are looking up. Things are always looking up for Kite Man. And deep anyway. just sort of pats... Kite man on the back and says, "I know you're." Kite going to pops do up. A kite pops out of his backpack as you do. Oh, uh, 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 apologies. Uh, I keep forgetting that happens. Ah, uh, no problem. And he like pulls the the thing to make it collapse. Anyway, I point to Firefly and go like, "All right, before I go, do you have any uh, concerns about this? Uh, am I allowed to use lethal force?" I kind of have to knit my fingers at that and go like, do I have to remind you when you can? I just want to know because obviously I've got different settings on this here gun and depending on, you know, what threats I run into, I want to make sure that if I need to, uh, you know, take out a Joker clown that, uh, I, I don't get in trouble for for overstepping. Uh, that Viv will kind of raise a finger and go like, all right, on my official given grant, you are permitted to use lethal force if you find yourself in a situation in which something poses an inimical threat to the loss of life, especially to you and the heroes you will be taking with you. If that situation does occur, you may, in fact, shoot to kill. And you may or do so expressly under my permission. And, and Deep Knight sort of leans over to Viv and says, uh, don't you mean burn the kill? It's a very functionable term that works in context. Now, uh, so and- if something goes down, at least we'll get in trouble together. I hope you're not an idiot. Which, I'm assuming you aren't. I'm a scientist. I, I turned myself into a monster. You give me drugs in order to like keep that from happening. Oh. You're that guy. I'm sorry. I kind of go through too many cases to remember stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's been a few million years. <laughs> I was not aware of that. But, uh... Any- yeah, time works a wee bit differently for, uh... For Viv here. And let's not worry about that. Anyway, so you're f- clear with the mission parameters, what you're permitted to do, what you need to do. So, you know, as always, put in a good eight hours effort and come home and clock out. Oh, wait, have I been calling him Firefly? I meant Killer Moth. Yeah, you have been calling him Firefly. It's, I had no fucking idea who you were referring to. Oh, God. Chemo brain. I'm so sorry. 
It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, killer moth. Killer moth. That now, killer. now you would have mo- remembered that he's the guy who you had to give the drugs to. Cause, like, yeah, moth, I didn't moth. remember who it was, but when you said Firefly, I was like, is that him? That sounds vaguely correct. It, yeah, it, they're very, <laughs> very similar. Like, I, I'll show you pictures of their two outfits and, like, you'll see what I mean. Like, they are, they are almost identical when they're in their... Uh, killer moth or firefly costume so to be fair killer moth is a lot more purple well right but i'm just saying like the general design is pretty much the same yeah understood let's look at that oh yeah like check it out if you if you think you know, got a second like it, it's it's so close that like i sometimes forget which one is which Anyway, um, Killer Moth agrees that he will, you know, be smart, but he wants to know, you know, that he's authorized to take these villains out if he sees them. Because you guys haven't really used Killer Moth like this. I wonder how Great King Rat's going to feel about you using his henchmen. I hope he doesn't give me fucking lip for it. That's the last thing. Anyway, uh, so at that I offer, it's like, well, you're permitted to take out someone you think poses an inimical threat to life. You know, it isn't certainly not a shoot first thing. And if possible, direct the situations where you can let the um, the rookies do all the punching. And if something serious comes up, you shoot it till it's dead. Viv, that's exactly what, what I'm talking about. I don't okay. know. I don't know if you've been like gone for the last two million years or something, but like the Joker has left this city in so much chaos that like there are new like villains that rise up to try and claim his his throne in the vacuum. And they're just as bad as he is because the Joker is just a man. There's there's nothing special about the Joker. There doesn't need to be some special power. And Roman Sionis, that bastard, if he didn't have that, that skull, I'd be taking him out. You know, because he he's exactly what I'm talking about is a guy with no powers rising up to seize power in this vacuum and then he ends up with the powers of of uh dr fate that's some bs so the next time i see one of these assholes i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot them till they stop moving well uh, is that your official stance that is my official stance. Right. Understood. Uh, what is the two in word? Liability hazard and bench. Kite man, you're doing this alone. Kite man is happy to help. Meanwhile, Killer Moth is just like trying to argue you down he wants to he wants to tell you about how you're making the wrong call and this is exactly yeah, what goes wrong just... with locking everybody up in arkham and blah 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 look think... look the thing oh, hold is on, hold on. deep knight says what right. deep knight sort of says are you sure you want to leave leave uh killer moth out of this because i feel like he still could be a useful asset Deep Knight, the, the simple concession is that I don't make the rules. We have oversight from above. And if I uh, sanction someone with this mentality, that's going to fall on my head. Look, I understand there are reasonable circumstances under which lethal force is engaged. But a hero cannot walk out of this building with a hit list in mind. You move to capture. You start with your bare hands and you work your way up. If it ends in a death, then that's an unfortunate and sad thing. Not the goal. Killer Mouth can have all the homicidal uh, intentions he wants. But 
if he's going to verbally inform me that that is directly what he intends to do before he even steps out the door, then I can't sanction his deployment. It's just that simple. All righty. I mean, it is a little unfair, but I would like to keep my job and keep doing things around here. So that's the way it is. If Killer Moth is going to uh, have that stance, then he has to pay for it. And furthermore, what's the term? Gotham has to pay for it because I'm denied a useful asset in keeping it safe. So I assume that, like, Deep Knight says this to you off to the side, or do you say this right in front of Killer Moth? Ah. Uh, did, right, did you did you talk to Viv on the side, or did you just say this right on in the front side? Of, okay. So, uh, After you know, that, Dark Knight well, sort of I, like... I feel like I was getting cross-examined here because you said Killer Moth was still trying to talk uh, me out of this, and then yeah. Deep Knight said that. Yeah. So, so I, I just kind of I just felt wanted... like I just laid that all out. No, no, I just wanted to to make it clear because that's what the impression I was getting too was that you felt like this was happening there, but I I would assume that Deep Knight would pull you aside to say this rather than undermine the authority of you guys in front of the henchmen and rookies and all of that. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, you and Deep Knight discussed this, but before that, yes, uh, uh, Killer Moth is like haranguing you about like, this is exactly the problem with Okay. And Deep Knight, after sort of talking him on the side, says, says to, to the, to to this guy, Killer Moth, Killer Moth, to say, look, I understand how unfair it might seem, but you must under, but I think you can help in other ways as well. <laughs> And yeah. it's going to like going to talk to him about the whole data breach and such. I mean, does he have any uh, relating uh, proficiencies? I think I thought he was a geneticist. Yes, exactly. I I specialize in uh, you know biological, you know, medicine, science, etc. Not uh, not computers. All right, let's put this down some way. I will update the parameters somewhat. Uh, how, how? What's this? Uh, what's this uh, rapid response? Uh, Kite Man, given how things have been laid out, I grant you an additional thing. If you feel the need, you can ask, uh, you can, you know, contact uh, Killer Moth uh, for help as an emergency situation unfolds. Just understand what emergency situation entails under that. Kite Man always understands what an emergency is. Good. Killer Moth, you uh, have new parameters. Just wait for an emergency call. If it comes up, you're free to do whatever it is you want. Well, to bring the situation back to non-emergency. I, I'm just sick of these villains hurting everybody. I understand your pain, Killer Moth. I understand your pain. Yes, it really is a shame. I'd rather do things on my own, mind you. Mm. The oversight is problematic in some ways. But we have power structures we all fall inside of. Things have been laid out the way they are, gentlemen. I uh, wish you good luck. With that, I don't know if I can depart from this situation so I can go back to thinking about the cyberware breach. Yeah, uh, well, the, the, you know, they, they, they go do that, and we don't need to, you know, deal with that right now. They're, they're off doing their thing, so uh, you guys are, you know, here doing yours. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so simple thing. Let's try and figure out um, where the cyberware attack came from. As you do. Let's see. I have the spare points available, so I think I'll just use them to acquire a relating skill. It's probably something I need to have at this point. Yeah. Uh, what's the appropriate skill for this? I think it's... Um, uh, uh, forensic hacking. Yeah, I mean that that would probably be uh the the most useful uh one. But what? Oh, I'm just saying there's there's different uh, you know, skills related to all of that. Uh I mean, you can just put it into base technology, you know. Mm, you're probably right. Alright, cool. That would be a intelligence based skill. Roll a little plus nine. Why am I going oh it's fucking alright. Uh Alright, so that It's hard to imagine I can't figure it out. Such a large operation probably left a myriad of digital footprints. All right, so basically whatever got your information did it by completely uh overloading your system to the point where right now it is in like fail safe mode like recovery mode and so you can't even like access all of the information that you want ah uh, god I see. Okay. So, hmm. that'd be easiest to pull off if it was an inside job. That's kind of hard to exist. That's hard. That's kind of hard to do for, as an execute from remote. Yeah. Hmm. Not to mention, what's like the total volume of data on base? Oh, I mean, beyond terabytes, you know? A lot, so... Yeah. I guess my uh, joke there is that whatever the case was, it probably took a hot minute to move all the data. Yes. Meaning that this is a job that's way harder if done by remote. It probably was done physically, here, quickly. Maybe. Mm. So I'm going. So after hearing that, Deep Knight's going to investigate the surrounding area for any sort of like sort of footprints or fingerprints. What, what yeah. surrounding area? Of the computer area? Well, the, the main server frame housing room, that's where you're talking about? Yeah. Because like yes. the computers are everywhere. Yes, the main server room. Okay. Technically, it would be best to do it from there, but any on-site access point would have been quote-unquote good enough. Mm. Unless we're wireless. Do we have a Wi-Fi? Oh, yeah. You guys are completely wireless, except for it's uh, completely sealed. Like, your, your, your wireless will only connect with your system's authorized, you know. Units. Yeah, okay. It's probably not... On the other side, I'm going to look into, you know, local uh, tech wiz uh, wizzos. 
there are no fingerprints or footprints of anyone who was not logged into the registrar uh, this this week. Deep Knight sort of like after being in the server room scanning the area for fingerprints and footprints says nothing to report here. Only fingerprints there are are the ones that have already been registered. Mm, right. Well, they're probably professionals, so that was not likely to flag anyway. Um, let's see. Let's think. Uh, can I try and gather information about like um, notable uh, tech users uh, that are uh, are local? Yeah, absolutely. How though? Uh, with your skills. What skill do I use for that? Uh, I believe it's called, uh, investigation or street something. Uh, hold on, let me. I think it's investigation because that's the only skill I have. Yeah. Wow, and I rolled like Garbo. Good but thing I, I like, help? connect. Uh, I was going to say, good thing I have connections and everything. The advantage is related to this exact thing. It's just annoying. Yeah. Okay, so Streetwise gives you uh, the ability to, like, know about stuff, um, you know, just on the street. But Investigation, you know, can also uh, be going out and just, you know, asking. So, um, you know, Streetwise, though, is more like being able to talk to people and find out stuff without seeming like a cop, you know? Well, yeah, I, for me, given that how a uh, tech savvy aunt one probably has a lot to do with um, uh, greasy fucking nerds, it's probably just a bit of online trawling. Yeah. So uh, you um, would would know that there are a number of, uh, you know, computer savvy um, people uh, mostly in the, uh, Bat family. Um, you know, you got, you got Nightwing, who's, who's really good, uh, with, with that stuff. And then, uh, aren't you guys also already aware of the fact that Batman is, is still technically alive? So he's like the greatest computer dude in the world. And, uh, <sighs> let's see. Um... Some some lower level uh, guys that work for for uh, uh, that stupid uh, inner inner gang or, or whatever they're called. Uh. Right. So I guess it's best to start with the Bat family then. I, how can I kick up a meeting with them? Uh, you just uh, kind of like show up because they technically are Justice League members, so you know they just basically have their own division. All right, I guess I'll show up then. It's probably best to start with them. Yeah. So, uh, Damien and <clears throat> um, um, oh crap, which which Robin is it? It's it's Dr it's Grayson. Uh, uh. Damien and Grayson are um, hanging out in the cave. Uh, Selena is wherever the hell Selena goes. And um, as I already covered, Red Hood, Red Batman is not welcome. So I think that covers the Bat family for now. Uh huh. Indeed. So I'm going to show up in the way that I do with Deep Knight. And Deep Knight show up the way he does, very formal, but in his armor. Mm hmm. Intergang. 
so there's there's like some inter gang uh, members who who have the kind of computer you know technology you you might uh, need. But yeah, you like you said, you wanna you wanna go with the with the bats. So because it was also technically more likely to be an infiltration job, so like the bat people have the correct combination of skills to not only do it, do it easily. Mm. And also, uh, they could possibly help if and when you do figure everything out. So yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, um, Dick and Damien are basically uh, doing the same thing that they're always doing every time you show up. Uh, fighting over which one of them makes the better Batman. Yeah. If that's the case, then I'm just going to show up and go... <clears throat> Good evening uh, there, you two. Batman? And they turn. Uh, so... There was an incident over at the uh, uh, main headquarters today, and I wanted to have a sit-down and talk with everyone who's available. An incident? Yes. You see, there was a type of cyber intrusion on base in which uh, all of our documents and information were grabbed. All of them. As is obvious, this is kind of an unacceptable breach of security. Firstly, I obviously want to come here and see if anyone here knows anything about it. Well, if you're accusing us of hacking into your database, like, first of all, obviously we could anytime we wanted to and you'd never even know that it happened, so... And then also, like, um, why would we need to? We can just go there and access whatever information we want at the time. Right? Like, these are Justice League badges, ID cards that we have here, right? Yes. Yes. Of course. You're correct in both of those statements. Well, assumedly. But... And that uh, <clears throat> this still presents a notable and inimical threat to the local branch of the Justice League. Oh, I, I can agree with that, but I mean, you start off by basically accusing us, like you know. And this, this is this is this is uh, Damien, by the way. Uh, Dick is is much more reserved and just sitting back and and listening. And I sort of uh, Deep Knight sort of steps up to Damien and says. Listen, listen. We're Damien not smacks you with his uh, quarter staff for getting too close. I, and it's just uh, you have shown you like a dung. Just say, hey, uh, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I'm personal face. Sorry, I'm sorry. Apologies. <sighs> Look, we're not trying to accuse you. We're just trying to figure out the mystery behind this whole data expungence. So, number two of the situation is that because it is such a large problem, I'm wondering you might know anything about any uh, interest groups that would be capable of pulling off this job. Well, as you probably know or suspect or whatever... Bruce kept a lot of information from the Justice League. Mm-hmm. There is one threat that still exists that Clark didn't know about. Because Bruce kept it from him for a reason. Because if Clark knew that this threat wasn't destroyed and still had 
the bottle city of Kandor. He would never rest until he freed his people. Uh -huh. But with Brainiac confined to the Phantom Zone, Bruce figured that everything was fine. But it is possible with his infinite brain powers that Brainiac has escaped the Phantom Zone. And targeted your computer. I raise my fucking eyebrow that and going like, our computer. And Deep Knight just sort of like, after hearing the word Brainiac, just sort of like, as he's uh, sort of like examining the the uh, stuff lying around in the stuff set up so so cleanly and sort of trips a bit after hearing that and says, did you say Brainiac? As in that planet-taking robotic mind? Okay. Okay. Yeah, but that's like, the one. Why are computers specifically? Uh, because you're the Justice League? We're the Gotham branch of the Justice League. Right. So the branch of the one that houses Batman's information, which, you know, is what he was probably after. Ah, right, right. Mm. I have to buy a cybersecurity upgrade. <sighs> Oh, All right. speaking of which, uh, do you think we could um, get a little bit more for our stipend uh, this this upcoming uh, week? Um, Bruce kind of, you know, has all the funds frozen right now. And uh, I know we get our salaries, but we had to, you know, cover a lot of uh, taxes and uh, expenses to you know, keep this cave running, so. I... Duh. What kind of... How large? Uh, nothing too much. I think, um... You know, somewhere around... 3.7 million ought to cover what we need. Ah... Uh... It's not within my operational capacity to sign off on a stipend that big. I could write a proposal on your behalf, though. Uh, well, you know, it's just um, if our electric gets uh, shut down, there's actually uh, some things that could go bad that we're not at liberty. I've said too much. Right. I understand what you mean. A lot of uh, dangerous equipment that could go off. Damn, that's a fucking good one. Yes, but I'm taking the big penny. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'm almost tempted now. I'm kind of interested in just taking the fucking big penny. If if you have your mic, you can you can talk. Oh, oh, can Wayne? No, Wayne. Wayne's not here right now, but oh. but still, like you can talk. That's funny. I, I, I'm going to kind of consider that. I wonder how much that would fetch on my home. I might be able to supply the money myself. I mean... Now easy there. This giant penny is an artifact. The real answer yeah. is... Uh, That's why it's tasty. Like, out of character, at least Viv would know that $3.7 million is something she could feasibly ask the Great King Rat for and get without much trouble. Uh yeah, but like I'm not gonna pre I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna venture that to them just for free out of nowhere. No, I just I'm just saying like go into this uh fucking buying a bunch of shit from these two orphans uh with that in mind. Yeah, I'm just thinking here like 
I like how she's just hesitating to like make sure that the orphans keep the electricity on, even when it's like a Ghostbusters situation where if you shut down the grid, there might be catastrophic things. I'm just gonna side that though and go like random out of the blue question though. How much for the penny? The penny? The penny. That it, that's one of Batman's like first <laughs> things that that he like got as his collection of you know trophies and and souvenirs from the battles it. that he fought. Yeah. I believe the one that you, he got it from was the one with the uh, the man with the pennies. The thing, the man who could uh, do a lot of the things with the pennies. You're wrong. It was Two Face. Yep. Yeah. And so I kind of roll my hand here and go like, so. Oh no! It was originally a trophy from. The Penny Plunderer, 1947. Yeah, but yes. Yeah, but the Golden Age didn't happen in this universe. That's true. That's true. So since this isn't the Golden Age universe, it is the Two Face uh, coin and not and not the Penny Plunderer. Oh, it was still the Penny. It's just the Two Face strapped into a giant penny in a fucking museum and tried to flip him to death. Yep. No, it's still a penny. I'm just saying it's it's yeah. the Two Face one not the not the penny plunderer one anyway so yeah uh, they're mentioning that like you know it's a trophy and i just kind of roll my hand and go like and it's not your trophy homie what do you what, what do you thought that's still for yeah I, I mean, i'm not gonna say that i'm just going like and so you're bringing that up because uh 10 million 10 million That's an interesting price point. I'll get back to you. Uh, anyway, and well, the, and Geek Knight sort of like put, raises a hand and says, "What if we were to like donate these to a museum and and get funds that way?" I am absolutely under no circumstances donating a artifact that comes into my care to a museum. <laughs> also, that's that's not how donations work. You don't get money for them. Yeah, also, side that, you know, that would be putting it up for auction. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting price point. So, about that money? About what money? The money to keep the lights on? Yeah, what about it? I We need it. Ah... Uh, <laughs> All right, give me like a roll my hand here. Give me like an hour. I'll be right back. Okay. Now I just need to find ten million uh, dollars worth of something. <laughs> Go bring them ten million dollars worth of rice. <laughs> no, it's fucking. I'm just wondering: is there something that would be easy to produce on my home plane that I could bring back to this one? And just flog for the cash real quick. How much is how much how much gold is ten million dollars worth? Uh, gold by pound. I mean, I probably wouldn't bring gold, but like, let's see, one, let's see, one of uh, gold today would sell at about seventeen thousand dollars. Really. Seventeen thousand hmm. dollars. That's still a lot of pounds of gold. Do you want to get to ten million though? Uh, it it is currently twenty one thousand dollars. Oh, twenty one. I must have got something wrong. Uh, just as a thought experiment, you know. Let's see. That's that many zeros divided by twenty one. It's 000. almost five hundred pounds. Four hundred and seventy six pounds of gold. Four hundred. Yeah, Ziv could carry that feasibly. Yeah, you're right. I could carry that much fucking gold. I is this something I can? I don't want to bring that much physical material back. Is there something even better I can work with? Like, what about platinum? 
or a very nice gemstone, but then there's the appraisal process and you know what? I could bring like a big ass gemstone or something. Those things have fluctuating worth in anyway. It probably wouldn't hurt the economy. Bring a gemstone to the penguin. He'll 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 buy he'll buy a gemstone the size of his head for ten million cash. Do you think he'd like it more if it was shaped like his head? Probably. I mean, you could, you could get like a hundred million dollars out of that fucking guy for a diamond in the shape of him, or a or the shape of a penguin in it in itself. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna do something like that. I'm just gonna tie all these elements together because I want the fucking penny. Since this seems like such a cool thing, rhodium is worth one. Seventeen thousand dollars per ounce. So what is rhodium? Is that's not illegal, right? I believe no, it's in the, no. That's so that's two hundred and seventy two thousand dollars per pound. So that's like five pounds of rhodium? for a million. Uh, it's about 36 pounds. For the 10 million. For the 10 million. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, just under 37. 36.76. So. so, like, what do, you, what do you think I should do? Just, I think, like, the, the, the diamond penguin thing would be quicker. He's got the money. I'll see what I can do. I'm going to go home and just fucking print a diamond in the shape of a penguin and then see if I can sell it to the penguin. How big is it? Like, uh, let's say that the sculpture is exactly the same size as a real life, like, emperor penguin. Damn, that's, that's like, like four feet four tall. Feet tall. Yeah. The emperor penguins are that fucking tall? I yes. don't know. <laughs> they are like huge. A- that's as big oh. as he is and would weigh like a thousand pounds. Yeah, that that's a Wayne <laughs> size statue. <laughs> okay, cut the fucking size in half. Okay. It's like a baby emperor penguin there. Okay. It's a macaroni penguin with the eyebrow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I will make a fucking diamond uh, sculpture like that. And then I'm going to try and sell it for the fucking penguin for the money. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, now that that you're you're doing that i know that like time moves differently on your plane but effectively this is going to um cut into the time where uh now if you go visit with the penguin and all of that now effectively viv is in the same boat as uh, like Tremor and all of that to where now you're like just a little bit out of time in in like, uh, like where the... The thing is, what, what I'm doing is probably going to take longer than the elapsation of the fight. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. That, I don't care. That, that That's fine. What This is all funny, and if it ends with me owning the penny, I'm going to be real happy about it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make it clear that like... You're stepping off the map now, you know. Cool, cool. That's okay. All right. Yeah. That that, that I guess that's left to, like if Deep Knight wants to putz around. Yes, and then also. Um, I gotta use the restroom anyway. Great King Rat. Uh, I I do have uh something that we can kind of handle without um slime light um being here. Obviously, you know. Uh, he had to get going to bed, but, um, so, uh, you and Slimelight go to confront Azrael, and, uh... Hey, you can't be here in the church within 500 feet. Yes, well, eat this, and he uses his, uh, Black Lantern ring to form, uh... Uh, a protective black lantern light shell around him and it's not uh magic you know so your your magic busting 
uh, buster teeth don't uh, magically bust the the um, shell. And so uh, what ends up happening is you guys are kind of uh, going back and forth a little. Um, there's not really um, a, a clear, like, ass beating, you know, towards you guys. But you definitely aren't making a whole lot of progress on, on, on beating him either. And so with his overall toughness being jacked up by the Black Lantern Ring and then his power level being jacked up by the Black Lantern Ring, uh, Azriel is proving to be a little bit more than Slime Light and Great King Rat can handle on their own. And so what do you do? Uh, can you have the homie roll a will save? A will save? A will save. What's this against? Uh, this is against DC 21. Y but what I mean is what's happening. Oh, Wayne's got a new spell and he wants to try it out on somebody that he could, just in case it's uh, one of those ones that blows somebody's head up. What spell? What's it, what's so it supposed to do? It's uh, it's a, this is an attack against will again instead of toughness. Yeah, but what's it do uh, if he fails? Oh, he loses. Um, let me find the correct. He loses. Oh, I had this written down. Give me a second. Uh, uh, do, do you have that, or, I mean, it, it... Oh. Yeah, it's just against... Here, I'm just gonna... Drop it in the chat, because it's just versus Will, and I'm not sure... I believe it just damages them. Like, on a physical, mental level. Right. That's what, that's why I'm, like, wondering, is this an yeah. effect? Is this a damage thing? You know, what's... Yeah, it's damage. At least at this age, it's pure damage. Eventually, it'll probably get turned into a weakened ability. All right. So, uh, you you do manage to to damage him, but you don't you don't manage to do anything that affects him because he's already dead. He's dead, but sentient. Yes, but what I mean is that although the damage, like, buys you time because it's, like, affecting him mentally, so it's like a psychic, you know, assault on him, like, you're you're not dealing actual damage to him to where, like, he's going to be knocked out or something like that, you know. So, so, at the end of the day, he is still very much... Uh, going to be able to fight you as soon as he can overcome this effect and you're not going to be able to take him out it, it just because he's like temporarily like grabbing his head and you know being like oh get out of my head you rat you know did that stagger him that was three ranks of failure uh yeah that's three ranks yes cool give me another will save for what 
uh, teleport being teleported uh, low Earth orbit almost. I'm gonna I'm gonna double check. Uh, what's ten ranks of teleport? Yeah, nope. The Black Lantern ring protects him. Ah, uh, I mean, he would have just fallen. No, I know, but that, that's what I mean. Is like it, it's just going to protect him right away. Like the Black Lantern ring is a very, very powerful item that uh, you know Azrael is is using very smart. So basically, inside his Black Lantern ring bubble, he can't be teleported. I didn't keep that up even staggered. Uh, the Black Lantern Ring is semi sentient. Uh, all Lantern Rings are semi sentient. So they they can act on their own to a degree. And uh, staggered, of course, he still gets, you know, to, to do a little bit. So, yes. So you're telling me how Jordan's Lantern Ring is defeated? pretty soundly by a fucking patch of sunflowers and this thing is uh makes you immortal and immune to magic um yeah not immune though. but it but it but it can protect immune. you it can protect you not immune impervious, immune, to impervious tele- immune, immune immune to teleportation well inside its protective bubble is not immune to magic Sorry, impervious to all forms of damage in that he's dead. And so nothing, you know. That, that uh, he is not impervious to all forms of damage. Uh, if, if you were, you know, able, able to get through his, his protections and all of that, his body comes apart re- relatively easy. Um, but his brain... Being an un undead brain, uh, even though you can still affect it, is it's not like he's not gonna die from like psychic damage. I mean, they also don't die from like having their head cut off or having the shit kicked out of them. <laughs> And even if they do, there is the uh, the the daunting fact that another stronger one just comes and takes them away, even if we do manage to take one down. Well, that did happen one time, and you know these are all true facts yeah. that you're that you're that you're stating about the the power of the Black Lanterns. There's there's a reason that they're uh, such a threat, you know. <laughs> So yeah, Black Lantern Azrael, he's uh, he's proven to be a handful. But you you have managed to like stagger him, like you know, if if you if you want, you can. Uh, call in some backup or leave or I mean I can't leave uh, a black lantern running loose in downtown dog that's true that's true it's essentially just great king rat against the black lantern and like pen, uh, pen and paper fight he could probably incapacitate the guy but that's meaningless mm-hmm mm-hmm you you realize you essentially created an infinite fight, right? Uh yeah. In this in this one specific scenario here, um you know, you you and Slimelight just don't have the the combined one two punch to take out a black lantern together.
How does he fare against uh, magically created light? It's like a fucking lot of it. Like you're trying to blind him? See, at, at this point, it's... um. I can't remember the name of it, but it's it, it, it's like unstoppable force, immovable object. Even if it's just hypothetical Wayne and hypothetical as uh, Azrael, they are both uh, regenerating and ageless creatures. Yep. So Wayne is going to try to blast him with as much light as possible, just to say. Uh, yeah. I mean, he he doesn't he doesn't love it, um, but he's like not a it's vamp. A, it's a light based power. I mean. Right, but he's not a vampire either, you know, so, like, it's basically, like, it's it's blinding, and it's bright, and it's unpleasant, but um, it's no different from, you know, having somebody with those really ultra LED lights shining in your face, you know, like, it's a dick move, you know, he's, he's like, not gonna lie, dick move. And then he fucking you know, runs Wayne with, through with his fucking flaming sword for the eighth time today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys just going back and forth, you know, except for it's a black flaming sword. Oh, no. Yeah. And, and it actually does kind of, like, feel bad. Like, you don't love it, but you regenerate, so, you know. Hey. But, like, you can feel your... your uh, depression and and self-loathing like coming back with every touch of the black flames so why are you doing this like uh you were alive before you had to who uh who got you go you can uh, you can smell it on him it was wonder it was wonder woman that piss you off? He he but, just slices and slices and slices at you like he he's he's in a almost rage except for like the black lanterns aren't like the rage lanterns so you know not like rage but he's just you know undead fury assaulting you. A revenant of sorts. Yes, a revenant. Thank you. Oh, easy done then. Uh, Wayne's just gonna, like, Wayne is probably 60 times faster than this guy. He's going to lure, he's gonna start luring him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he he's, he's coming. Cool. Uh, can I Terminator 2 this guy? I don't know what that means. Oh, you're like Rocket trying to, trying to lure, oh, yeah, no. He'll he'll fly no. with his black lantern ring, you know. He'll just you know. Try Terminator One. Uh. You know, welcome wife. to the hydraulic press sound. Oh, the hydraulic press. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, uh, possibly. I mean, that that'd be like uh, an intelligence thing and all of that. Uh, Like I'm not, I'm not shooting that down as a possible means of of dealing with this, but this this battle is for everyone. So, and no one is here. Exactly. I mean, in game, the justification is simply that the Black Lantern Ring's power is not magic, therefore your magic busting teeth don't work, therefore you're not able to do enough damage, therefore you need backup. I'm going to put him on ice for a little bit. 
I get him somewhere that I can do something to him that we can, you know, take him out of the game for a smidge. Right. Uh, probably a foundry. Yeah, I can just cover him in fucking slag or iron. Drop a bucket on him, one of those two and a half ton buckets. Uh, He's not intelligent of the ring. This is just, like you said, a zombie. It's a revenant. It doesn't speak, it doesn't do anything. Well, it does speak. He, he does speak. He was talking before, but th- then you started like talking to him about what happened, and he, and he went into a rage. So he's still, he's still, you know, sentient. Yeah, we don't get him to a, a foundry or any, or a, maybe a factory with one of those uh, car crushers. Not the, um, not the fucking brave little toaster from above one, but the, uh, those two pummeling sets of blades that just sort of slam together. Like, they spin, you know? The one's kind of like a paper shredder, but huge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Foundry or a factory is one of those, whichever one is closer. Okay. We need to have an idea. And then he'll put out the coffin some backup while he tries to uh, lure homeboy into one of them. Right. So who are you calling first? I mean, just putting out the lead call. Okay, so you just put out the the emergency beacon. You just activate your, your, all right, you know, everybody rally to me. Yep. So, uh, Viv, even on your plane, and um, Deep Knight, uh, your your beepers start beeping. And Deep Knight sort of notices this and sort of like looking around and says to the back folks and says, uh, one moment, I need to go be somewhere. Don't move. Our our beep our beepers are going too. Yeah, yeah. Then you know where I have to go. Uh Okay. And he heads out, riding the wave, as you say. <laughs> yes. I love it when when he does that. That that's my favorite image of him is like just riding around on the wave like a like a non frozen ice man. A liquid ice man. Liquid ice man. And, and so uh Viv, you still there? Viv? Uh, he he might be away from the keyboard or uh, speaker or whatever. So, um, but yeah. So uh, you you head out to to go intercept the uh, emergency beacon, and I'm not sure what Viv is going to do. So we're gonna make sure that we get that, but. There is also Kite Man, Killer Moth, King Kraken, and um, Clayface. Yeah. And um, Killer Moth is, like, already in route. Kite Man and the rookies were out on patrol... So he's going to have to make a decision and I'm going to be just straight up front with you guys that I 
I'm not sure what that decision is going to be. So I'm. Uh, he probably defaults to control to a patrol because what the fuck else is he is he going to like? What is he going to do with something that requires an all hands? It, it's an all hands, but he was also specifically ordered to not let the rookies get killed. Yeah, no, he's good. He's fine. He, he knows what he knows when. He's in the in the fucking class of people who are better on patrol than fighting something big because something big does something big and then something yeah. just like a short eight members. Yeah. So, you know, basically, um I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out exactly what he's gonna do, but I am leaning towards him being kite man, you know, so uh anyway, Killer no. Moth though is is definitely on his way. Uh, King Kraken didn't say one way or another what he was going to do. Probably because I didn't try and communicate with him. <laughs> that, that, that was also a terrible joke because, you know, he doesn't talk. So. Uh, um, any, anyway, Viv. Wait, what? Wayne's called on all hands. Yeah, the the Justice League uh, has the communicator devices that are also equipped with distress signals, and uh, Wayne's has been activated on the uh, material plane designated, you know, Earth, blah blah blah. Um, that uh, you know, he he is he is currently in a life threatening all hands on deck situation. And so your emergency uh, beacon transponder is beeping even on your dimension as you finish. You just finished the penguin. Hello? Yeah. So what do you do? Uh, God. Uh, uh, mm, well, I mean, it can't possibly take that long. I don't help. You're thinking about the penguin before you go help Wayne, aren't you? Well, the thing is, I was kind of gonna do that, because I, like, don't want to leave the other bros hanging for too long. It would be a shame if they missed their electricity bill. I mean, they made it sound important, so, you know, I was kind of thinking I might... I might consider that I, uh, um... took their, um, warning very seriously, and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. All right. All right. Well, uh, then in that case, uh, Wayne, you will be facing Asriel as you continue to hold him at bay with Slimelight, who, of course, you know, has been fighting at your side, but with the player not... Uh, here at the moment where we're going to, um, you know, kind of put it in the background that, you know, they're fighting, but you oh, and... sorry, I kind of want to offer something since I was thinking about doing that build on that minion, I might like send in my new minion and introduce them next week. Well, we'll just as a thought. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. But, um, for now, uh, Slimelight and Wayne are holding Black Lantern as Azrael at bay. However, um, then suddenly uh, Deep Knight and Killer Moth both kind of arrive at the same time. And that is where we're going to have to kind of freeze you guys in time um, until all the players are available. And depending on what he wants to do, 
Tremor might or might not make it for this as well. Uh, we'll we'll see about that because him and and Lex had some stuff that they were doing. But before we wrap session, we will do the penguin thing real quick. Since if you're going to go do the penguin thing and miss the battle, then there's no reason to keep you frozen for it. Oh, okay. So uh, <clears throat> the penguin. Yeah. Wah, 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 what? What is it? Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me again. It's been a little while since we last spoke. Uh, yeah, I'm a busy man here. What, 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 what's going on? What? Oh, I just recently came into the possession of an item I thought might interest you, and was wondering if you could uh, buy it from me. I think I could offer a fair price. Oh, well, I, I, uh, I'm always interested in uh, purchasing expensive and classy, tasteful things. I think this item could be described with all three of those adjectives. With that, I'm going to take, um, you know, it's going to be a back, it's going to be a, a black box item um, where its only notable thing is that it has seams along the corners and a, um, a keyhole on the top. And then, uh, you know, fairly, a somewhat showy manner, I'm going to put the key into the top of the box turn it, and it's going to click open, revealing the aforementioned specified diamond penguin statue. Mm, mm, what is this? Mm. It's uh, a penguin formed out of a diamond. Mm, ah, ah, oh, is that uh, one of those uh, Schwarzkopf crystal things? Hmm? No, it uh, would, against examination by a jeweler, classify as a real genuine diamond. Yeah, classify as a diamond. Oh, well, what, what kind of, what kind of scam is this? It's not a scam, mind you. Maybe my uh, words are a little too clinical. It's a diamond. It just is a diamond. Oh, oh. oh. yeah. I mean, is this a, is this a gift? No, I need a little money for it. I just thought you were the man for it, of oh, course. I don't I... like to come around and grovel for things. I wouldn't really want to take out a loan, so I thought I could sell this little item I had laying around to you. Oh, well, uh, what do I look like, a pawn shop? Or, uh, well, uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, what, what, let, let's say I, I, I wanted it. Well, what, if what, you, you know, what would what 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 would what would it cost me? Mm, Ten million is all I'm all I need. Wow! What are you crazy? No. Well, she is out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just. A well thing. Yes, I I just I just opened the the, uh, the iceberg lounge and. Uh, you saw what happened there, uh, repairs and uh, the taxes and, oh. Hmm. I see. So, am I hearing you're not interested in the buy? That would be a shame. Ah, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the best I can offer you is like, uh, you know, 250 and uh, Chum Lee will give you half of his burger. Hmm. <sighs> Uh, I see. Mm. Well, uh, that's obviously a a bit of a meta joke. He he lowballs you is the is the gist. I get that. I get that. Hmm. I see. Bronze stars. Yeah. And 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 here I thought this was going Bronze to be. Bronze stars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to um, fucking sell from the awkward position I put myself in, and that I'm completely price inflexible. But I suppose I should just roll for it at this point. Okay. I mean, I don't want to bring this up. I don't want to make the the uh, the session miss at its ending. Uh, but. Uh, 
there's a lady, uh, Oswald is kind of fucking bad at talking to women. All right, I forgot. I also have attractive. I can, can I cash yes. in on the plus two? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, in, in fact, not only do you get the the plus two for attractive, but because uh, Oswald Cobblepot is actually weak against attractive women, uh, you get a further plus three to bring it up to plus five. Okay, I'll roll with those bonuses, and since it is almost quantifiably going to be the last um, uh, roll I make this session, I'll also just throw in the hero point if I roll like Garbo. It's like you do, but you still have a pretty high score, but you want to go ahead and hero point that anyway, so... yeah. It's no reason not to. Exactly. So. Like, the least you can get is an 11, so that's three points higher. Yeah. Uh, so, thing again with the same modifiers. Come on, give me that fucking high roll. Hey. Ayo, 35. <laughs> All right. So now, we are going to go ahead and and say that, of course... You are successful in convincing him to pay much more than the lowball offer. But now we're going to find out how much of the $10 million he is going to go to. Here's the way it's going to work. There is going to be a full 25% chance that he just instantly gives you the $10 million, no questions asked. There will be a further 25% chance that he ups his offer to like 7.5 million, you know, a a figure that gets you very close. And then there is a 50% chance that he gives you 5 million. That is the least you are going to get unless I roll an odd odd. If I roll an odd odd, then the most you're going to get as an offer is the 3.7 million minimum that you need. A what? Okay. A what? An odd odd? That odd, means 100. Odd. Yes, 100. It means it means all zeros. Ah, oh, got it. Got it. Got it. So this is low is good or high is good? Uh, low is good. So, uh you Mother uh, Chumps in there. Yeah, you are you are getting the uh, the uh, five million offer. Ah, uh, damn! That's I'll a shame. Juicy in the chat, real quick. What's that? So, just oh. throwing it out there. Oh yeah, yeah. What are you throwing out? Uh, if it, if you look at the chat, he has an idea that could get him to uh, to uh, go along. Yeah, like <sighs> the thing is, is that like I'd be totally tempted if it wasn't for the fact that like how can I say this? It's, it's the nose, suck. isn't it? It's not the nose. It's I find <laughs> that part cute. Um, uh, I guess I could just say I'm a little anxious about dates, to be honest. But like, I don't know. It's been a long time. I run in all the finest circles. Uh, I belong to the Gotham Yacht Club. Yeah. All uh, right, all right. If that's what it takes, I could bounce to that additional uh, posit. Uh, any day and venue of your choice. Oh, 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 oh. And he, he, like, instantly cuts you a check. Ah, uh, f- Fuck. Good. It's like, right. Well, if all our business are concluded, I'll leave this here with you. And um, with that, they also uh, kind of, in a moment, they kind of hand him the key and go like, oh, and you're free to keep the box or not. But whatever you do, just don't damage the key. He grabs Uh, your hand and gives it a very gentlemanly kiss. 
I, 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 I uh, smile at this and, and uh, nod and go like, but for the time being, I do have to go. This was all quite a, um, what's the term? A bit of a rush business. I'm going to snap this check up and uh, go like, wait, phone number, right? Ah, oh, yeah, it's, uh, you know. What it is. Uh, Good. Uh, it, Just making it, sure. It, it, it's penguin. It, it's it's whatever whatever the numbers that spell out penguin. Good. And uh, with that, I'm going to teleport off. Yeah. Okay. So with that business resolved, damn, I'm gonna go the, go on a date with the penguin. He's rich as hell. <laughs> he can be rich all he likes, but like Viv I mean, is scared of intimacy. I don't know. <laughs> Shush you. All right. Uh, well, yeah, so now you're, you know, just a little bit forward in time from from where these guys are now frozen. Uh, so obviously we'll have to, you know, catch back up with uh, where everything goes on the next issue. Um, Deep Night, Neat. Uh, as, as you arrive at the battle you see uh asriel attacking wayne and uh slime light with such ferocity that um you know you're you're a little bit worried that like you and killer moth might not be enough here uh do you immediately jump into the battle regardless or do you attempt to do something else? Seeing this, uh, Deep Knight sort of turns the killer off and says, All right, uh, any suggested way of working this out? Yes, we attack. Mind you, this is a. Looks, this is Azrael we're talking about. Yeah, he's a little punk. Killer Moth has plus seven intelligence. Yes, but mind you, that seems like this punk must be holding a black lantern ring. Ooh, that's not good. See, the thing is, is uh, I don't like villains. Like, I was only a villain because I was turned into a monster and stuff like that. Like, I'm I'm not really, like, a villain per se. I, I understand so, what So, you like, mean. I, I hate Asriel, so I want to go kill him. Understood. But we need to find an effective way to kill him. How about this here gun that I invented? Does it... Does it... As Deep Knight sort of peeks over the wall and sees the whole shield and says, does it pierce lantern shields? Mm. No, not currently. Uh, I should probably work on that. Uh, I should I should probably hit up my boss for some upgrade points on my henchman status. Yeah. I... Probably. As I think we can do some guerrilla tactics on this, on this thing, and you're sneak thinking up of on... the other guy. I'm a moth. Grod is Grod is the other one. No, no, no. It's not literally gorilla. Oh. As in, as in we we attack him from below. Wouldn't that be? Uh... More of a submarine maneuver? You might want to get a hold of King Kraken for that. Well, I've been known to be underwater, so I think you... I think with my help, we can do that. Well, that's an interesting point. There is, of course, uh, you know, water mains and everything that you could try to sneak in under. Okay, then. Just need to get... Breaking rat to to lure this this black lantern to an underwater 
to an underwater, like underwater. We need to maneuver him over how, one. How are you going to communicate that to him? Wouldn't I sort of, sort of like, sort of thinks for a moment and says, smoke signals. Hey, we have communicators. Uh, and, and fucking drinking red's effectively blind. What are you talking about? Hey, I just, I'm just trying to think. I was just trying to think stealthily here. You'd be better off lighting an ocean-scented candle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Deep Knight sort of, sort of shuffles for his communicator and whispers into it in hopes Breaking Rat hears it and says, Gee, Breaking Rat, this is Deep Knight. I, we are, we are, uh, we are, where are we located near? When the it Foundry. Comes to Like, how close to the villain? Oh, you guys stayed back. You know, you, you saw Great King Rat and Limelight getting tossed around a bit. And so, like, you hung back for a second to make a plan. And Great King Rat just got his uh, hand cut off again and had to pick it back up and reattach it. Okay, so, uh, so we're, like, sort of behind and says, this is Deep night here, we are behind the enemy, and as a suggestion, I suggest you lead him to a nearby... You're interrupted from hearing that, Great King Rat, as uh, he slices off another one of your ears, and, um, you know, you're, all you can hear is shing and flames and, you know, battle, battle, battle. And so the ear with the communicator drops off. All right. Okay, that's bad. Great King Rats just started burning him. Just setting the guy on fire repeated over and over and over again. He's never not on fire now. <laughs> uh, well, the, the Black Lantern shield obviously like protects him, but the flames are all around it, so yes. And Deep Knight sort of like thinking right here and says, Okay, next plan. Time to. And he sort of starts inscribing the plan onto. onto Killer Braille. Moth picks you up and starts flying towards the battle. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it. We I'll, dro I'll, dro I'll drop you if you want, but I'm going. Wait, drop? I have an excellent. I have Plan B. Then drop me on Terminator Two. Him. Do a Terminator Two to Deep Knight. You you want to be dropped on him? Okay. And so that is exactly where this issue ends. Is with Killer Moth flying in at full speed and launching Deep Knight at Azrael. And all you see is the waves forming off of. Deep Knight as he comes streaking out of the sky like some kind of tsunami from heaven. And with, oh, and with that, we draw to a close for this session of Doomsday Aftermath. I want to thank you guys for playing. I want to thank anyone who's watching. And as always, everyone, good, good gaming. gaming.